Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into my early review for the brand new Lego Ideas Disney set. Disney's Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas set. This is Lego Ideas set number 59, set number 21351. It has 2,193 pieces and this will be retailing for $199.99 USD or $259.99 Canadian. This was actually sent to me early by Lego and Land to do a review for. It'll be releasing on September the 3rd for Lego Insiders and then September the 6th if you're not an insider. And I am very excited about this. I first was introduced to these characters through Kingdom Hearts. And this is another time that Lego Ideas is giving me a little taste, a little snippet of the worlds and the characters that I fell in love with through those games. So I'm so excited to take a closer look at this. You can see all the characters here that we're getting up at the top, the incredible logo up there. And then the back of the box shows off some of the different uh, play features in the set, as well as this other sort of idea that you can do, and that is decorating the whole town with a bunch of different Christmas decorations that are hidden in uh, multiple places here. So we're going to do that, but let's go ahead and let's take a closer look at this set. All right, here it is built. I just want to say a few things up here at the top. I'm surprised by the depth of this and just some of the building techniques that you're going to see in here is really really exciting if you want there are time codes and chapters if you want to hop around to the different sections because believe it or not this actually itself can split off into three sections let me show you that right now all right so i think i should be able to do it like this you can split them off into three individual sections so you've got the town hall over here jack's house here and then the spiral hill and the graveyard You'll see when we go a little bit more in detail with each of the sections, but uh, they actually just clip together on this cobblestone wall that links all three parts. And you can see in behind this gravestone here, this other connection point that uh, connects the graveyard. Here's the town hall, and you'll see like the angles in this set again are just crazy, but uh, you've got a little bit of stuff to look at on the outside here in this courtyard. But as you continue to spin this thing around and look at it from the back, you'll see there is actually some interior and some hidden things in the roofs of the different buildings. So out here in the courtyard, we have the iconic fountain here that Jack rises out of uh, in the intro song now would have been amazing to have some sort of play feature there but i love all of these studs there's 13 studs loose on top there Ooh, spooky number but uh, yeah i love the fountain you can angle it and raise it a little bit there and move it around it is a gargoyle and you definitely see the shape of that here with like the wings you've got the ears and then the mouth kind of wish there was like an actual drip of the liquid actually coming out of the mouth but the uh, whole part here, I love how it's on this flat section. It sort of separates itself really well from the rest of like the dark gray plates. But the angles here that they've created are just so cool. Just using these different slope pieces, these different techniques all around this to make it feel very different and unique. Here along the path, this is, you're going to see this sort of pattern all throughout the set. So you've got some light gray little stones throughout this, some medium nougat, some dark tan, and also a ton of the flower pieces in the new orange color for 2024. Also got a ton of skulls throughout this too. Let's look at the tree. This black tree here, which looks pretty great, just using some of the superhero stand pieces, creates some really awesome angles that you can pose and angle the branches and different things all however you want. But I love just these this tube piece here that it's on. And also in the very first submission, there was a large black tree. So I'm glad that they found, a, you know, some way to actually include that here in the set. Also over here in the back, we have a pumpkin, which is in dark orange here. So that looks really great. I feel like that's probably more in line with like the actual colors in the film, uh, having it be that sort of it's like a duller orange. Over here on this side, you can see the steps leading up to the town hall. Again, you've got a little bit of detail there with some flowers. Over here in the corner, you've got uh, this leaf piece there on the ground and some black little, uh, I guess that's the grass pieces and different things being used. And this is the connection point that you saw earlier. All right, now I just want to focus on the building. The angles here, and you'll see throughout this, like I've been saying this whole time, are amazing. Look at that there. That's just regular sloped angled pieces, but this wall 
on that angle is so cool. I also really, really love these pillars here. I will say though, the slightest little movement and they get out of place there. So you just gotta be careful with that. You'll notice probably in some of the shots and pictures that I'll use throughout this video, like they'll just be straight up and that's because I didn't notice. Uh, I wish that maybe they were locked into place, but also that just gives you a little bit of customizability. However big you want the pillars and different things to be angled, you could sort of, you know, play around with that, whatever you want. This banner looks really nice. This is one of the fabric pieces included, and I'm trying here to show you this. I'm just going to detach it because it's not cooperating, but there's the Lego logo there, and they've positioned it because every, or at least a lot of the different large fabric pieces have to have Lego printed on it. Um, so I like that they covered it up with the bone across there. They do have a Lego jack-o'-lantern there too. Then you've got two stickers above that, which is 35 days to Christmas. And up above on this three by three uh, flat tile, you've got the clock, which looks so cool. I love like the bat wings there. It's just a giant spider web there as well. Now let's step inside, shall we? The door can actually open up. It's got this really cool uh, just entrance way, how it's angled like this. It just, wow, I love that so much. Now, the door itself is actually just a regular rectangle there, but uh, you can't tell that from the other side. Now, something that I don't think you're meant to do, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways, is you push down on the wall and it'll open up. That's just going to help me get some more light inside here. And it's pretty simple. They just clip onto the wall like that, uh, that little clip that's there. But you could see... You can see up there at the very top corner, there's a Nexo Knight shield, and that has a sticker of a mask on it. You've also got these uh, unique little candles with uh, the whips. I think that's kind of interesting. And it's the same thing over here. That one is flat against the wall, and you've got, uh, again, that same sticker on the opposite side. All right, so looking here, we've got like some curtain designs. Looks pretty great. I think just using those curved pieces there and then even that to like tie the ribbon and I like the arch going across there. But you might've noticed there's this stud there that is for you to actually put this podium that is a build for the town hall. You just attach it like that. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, you've also got some benches on both sides to have everyone sort of gather around for Jack's big announcement now the whole thing is actually able to be lifted off the ground here and that ties and and will actually reveal underneath the town hall you can see that there's this archway so you can sort of see a little bit of this uh, without removing everything but you've got the spider there and then over here you've got a wreath that sits onto this one plate there you've also got this pitchfork now over here, coming around, you can see we've got this little bottle here, and that's supposed to be Frog's Breath that has overpowered, as Sally says, the hidden poison inside of whatever was brewing inside here with the soup and everything. You've got the spoon in the hand, and the designers have said this is not Dr. Finkelstein, but uh, is just a fun reference to that scene. Now looking at the roof, I love just the design of this. It's very easy to remove, but they sit so well and line up with the slopes. It looks really great. Anyways, you remove it and you can see that one of the sections, they're the exact same, but I like how they alternate between two by threes and two by two tiles to create that pattern. And it's really great. This one by six brick actually lines up on top of that little ledge there. And it just, the angle here is great. The like the science behind this design is really, really awesome. Now here in the roof, we've got a ton of different Christmas decorations. And a lot of these are specifically meant to be from when Jack returns uh, from Christmas Town and gives that presentation. So you've got a wreath there, and that's something you saw before, but you've got uh, a couple of different presents. I'm not gonna remove them all right now, but you could see them there on that side. You've got a little house and that is able to be removed. I think that's a very cute design that they've got going on here. You've got a skull with a ribbon on it. You've got a spider as well as this uh, stocking here that you can remove. And then again, another little present and a couple of other decorations. I don't think these are supposed to be removed when we decorate the town, but it's just connection points for the wreath. 
Here is the little podium included for the town hall. You're actually able to take the mayor and attach him there, which I think is really cool, just the, given the design of the mayor, that even though he's a really big character, you could still attach him to give a speech here. And uh, this is just a tombstone. That's what that's meant to be there. And I guess those are small little tombstones around. But also, uh, you are, of course, able to take Jack and have him give his presentation about uh, Christmas Town. Here is Jack's house on its own, the next part of the set that we're going to look at. I think that the design and shape of the house is really great. I don't think it's quite as uniquely shaped as it could have been or that we see from the film or even the original submission, but I still think that there is a lot of really cool techniques being used here to create that sort of Nightmare Before Christmas effect. All right, starting down here again, same sort of design that we had over with the town hall here. And you've got, uh, coming over here, you've got another little pumpkin. But the wall design just looks so great. The different uh, parts here that are even sticking out with those flat tiles look so darn cool. You can see the technique there being used uh, for that. And the gate, the front gate looks so good. I don't like to close it all the way because it just looks better just a little bit open like that. And coming over here to the other side, again, you've got some more details here with that wall. Also, I didn't point this out, but just look, they're on those one by two flat tiles there. So that looks really cool how that's sort of sticking out underneath. Uh, coming over here to the other side now, you do have another little pumpkin growing there. And again, some similar decorations and different detailing here. Like you've got some leaves on the floor that have actually fallen uh, from this big tree. Now, the design of these branches are very similar to the other tree that we saw, except this one is alive and it's got some autumn colors here, which I think this does add a lot to sort of set the tone that it's, you know, Halloween and just the fact that it's in the fall, but add some color, I think, to the set as well. Above the gate are these creatures, and I'm not sure what these are meant to be. I looked at the film, I looked at other toys and different things, and people said that they look like reptiles. I, I don't know, sort of, they, to me, they look like horses, sort of seahorses with spikes. But this looks more to me like a reindeer with the antlers there and that's just the vibe they're giving off i think here of course the gates are able to swing on open and they even stop right there on those two studs so i appreciate that they thought that through to not let them you know completely swing open maybe it would break off some of the bushes but you'll see here, you've got this whole sort of center bit there with the flat tiles. I like how it's a little bit damaged on the one corner. But oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite parts here. The staircase is just insane. The curves here, the different tiles and pieces used to create this wonky staircase going up. I just thoroughly love that so, so much. The uh, door here looks great that is a sticker that you have to place onto the door also like these beams that are supposed to be holding up the house um it's not you know i, I don't know it, i wish maybe it could be a little bit better in terms of like this actually holding it up that is as loose as i can have these staff pieces there and they still don't really touch so that is a bit of a shame i wish that, uh, you know, they could touch and hold it a little bit there on the end, but it still looks great. And you're actually able to completely remove this section here off of this base that they created, which is, I, I don't know why they have it modular like this, maybe easier for transportation, but yeah, you can see all the studs there that this attached to. Over here on the other side, you've got uh, this small little entrance way there, but you are able to, again, detach these walls to get access to this a little better. You've got this little Christmas tree that Jack uh, uses to study, but also he uses in his presentation. It's a simple little build. I like the ornaments that are on there. But you've also got, uh, I guess that's meant to be Santa's uh, sack there, or the sack that maybe they actually try and capture uh, Sandy Claus in. When you open the door here, I just want to try something. Height-wise, this new uh, door that was introduced is technically taller than Jack, so I appreciate that he's actually able to fit through the door in his own house. So just like the section uh, below, this is also modular, and you can remove and detach it very easily. It just sits on top there of those studs. The details here are great uh, with the shingles. I love the design of the roofs, these little 
poles that are holding up that section as well as the transparent yellow windows the angles of these sort of wood tiles look really great there too and just how they are all around the uh, window frame i guess we'll just keep talking about the roof shall we i love this angle like look at that that shape there and all of the shingles again the nexonite pieces over there and then over here on this side it's a little bit different here same shaping and everything but you'll notice up there on the top that those pieces are actually interlocking into each other to create the shape of the roof this side also has the chimney sticking out which is a very cool build there i love the angles and everything that they've got going on there that is very nightmare before christmas and to gain access into the attic you just remove this here and you can see again some orange pieces that are actually here to uh lock this into place it's a little loose but i still really love how that interlocks up there on the top but let's go and take a look what's hidden inside there so obviously you see here the uh one wreath on one side and on the other side another wreath and what's in the back there you've got another skull a pumpkin two presents there and then over here on this side two presents and a skeleton you do have some vines growing there on the top part there too so here in this room we've got a lot to go through so i'll start with the coolest thing and we've got here this uh, blackboard where he's trying to like scientifically and mathematically figure out the sort of formula to Christmas. So he's got a piece of chalk there and he's writing all this stuff down. But you could see that S.I., the designer said that that is meant to be a reference to Simon, the fan designer. And you could see that it equals Christmas. So there you go. That is uh, because if it wasn't for him submitting this twice here we would not have this set you've got a little thing of holly sitting there on the table and then over here on the other side you, we have a magnifying glass for him to take a closer look at different things i love this two by three tile that just sits there but it's, it's got a sticker of jack and he looks great in the santa claus outfit there and that's supposed to be from like that uh, sort of flip book that he has i wish there was another tile of him with like, you know, the pumpkin king sort of sketch that he had. You've got a bookshelf in the back there and I'm guessing he's studying the cookie with some milk. You have the telescope there, as well as a pile of different books that he's reading up on for Christmas. And then over here in the corner, I believe with the bottle, that's meant to be the box that Sally sends up for Jack. Here is Spiral Hill. I would say probably the most recognizable part of the build. Uh, I think that this just is so iconic with the moon in the back of the uh, the hill. It just it, it's an incredible design. You're gonna see and notice some of the different parts here, but also we got to talk about this this giant piece of cardboard here, which is actually pretty thick there. And it, they said that they actually decided to do this instead of it being brick built because they had recently done the Polaroid, and they were like, you know what? Let's just make it solid, it's iconic, and let's include that in the back. And if you want to, of course, you are able to easily detach the whole thing there. Um, you can pull out the peg and different things, but this is what uh, the hill looks like. I guess I should show you it when the moon is not out at night. All right, let's take a closer look here at the graveyard. So over here in the front, you could see that we've actually got this... Uh, little jack-o-lantern and inside is this transparent yellow head so that it's supposed to be like it's lit up You've got a little bit of like the path details from halloween town another pumpkin here another one there and then a jack-o-lantern over there on the side it also has a transparent head inside and i really like the floor color here the sand blue looks really great it just adds a little bit of color here and uh, maybe you could pretend that it's snow sort of like at the end of the film but anyways uh, there's also a bunch of flowers growing over here as well in lavender looks which looks good you've got the part that connects it to the other section that you saw before but also a couple of references specifically to where the deadly nightshade is located so over there in the back you could see we've got that nexo night shield which has a sticker we've also got witch hazel which is also from the film as well as in the back there henbane so those are all the tombstones that are next to where sally gets the deadly nightshade from you do have a generic 
tombstone here with a couple of scratches r.i.p with three x's and then same over here and i really like the designs of some of these tombstones they're really quite unique uh like these here and here even in the back you do have a couple of like simple ones there in dark gray but the center one is for zero which is really cute i like how it's sort of like a doghouse the triangular piece there with zero looks nice and the ski pole and just the slopes and everything works really well there is a stud so that you could actually take zero and attach him outside of his house okay so i'm gonna go ahead and just remove some of the graves just so that you can see a little better here the whole hill and it looks incredible like i said before it's one of the most iconic parts and most recognizable things from the film the way they've done the spiral obviously could spiral a little more but i don't know how you would do that brick built it looks really great all of these slopes here to create this shape is so remarkable it looks so good so clean i also am sort of tempted to maybe attempt come christmas time getting all of these pieces in white just so you could have it like at the end of the film where they are standing on top of it when it is all snowy again just some of the details there like look like that's not the full slope piece that's one of the ones that are angled so just little details like that really make this thing come alive the moon in the back looks so so perfect and you can have just jack dancing and singing there but also there is enough space for you to take sally and have him holding her like you see at the end of the film maybe this could be raised up a little bit more um just because jack's a little tall there he's almost at the edge of the moon but it's still looks great we are not done though there's a little bit of detailing here down below with a pumpkin growing another skull some vines as well as a spider there too and the reddish brown i think looks pretty good just adds a little bit of color like looking at it from the back and makes things easier when you're building the set all right so we're gonna go ahead and decorate this with all the christmas decorations something i'm actually noticing is they have you remove all of the Halloween decorations, like the jack-o'-lanterns, as well as all of the pumpkins. So here it is, all Christmassy. And I like the concept of it a lot. I think it, it is great. My favorite part is the wreaths, just all around here, just how you can have all those studs on Jack's house there. And even on the front gate, I think that looks really cool too. You do actually have to remove the... Uh, bush piece to have the wreath sitting inside of the tree but it looks really great when it's done there are some christmas presents and different things scattered around on the ground you've also got over there on jack's door the one stocking included as well here's my criticisms when it comes to these decorations would like some set of christmas lights i think that would really help things like maybe string them along the town hall but also the colors of this it doesn't make any sense they are the christmas town colors versus what actually happens in the film when they're making Christmas. They're not understanding, you know, Jack's vision and actually emulating Christmas. They put a Halloween spin on things. So I would like maybe the Christmas presents to all be orange and purple and have some orange Christmas lights throughout here. I think would be really much more appreciated. I'm shocked they did not include a yellow duck. Like, beyond shock i do like that it's included because this movie is often debated is it a christmas movie is it a halloween movie well it's both and so is the set i guess included is the bathtub which is great to to carry around oogie boogies boys i i really appreciate that a lot i i like that you've even got the little skeleton legs there for the feet i think that works really well and you could pretend that this is actually walking around but one of my favorite things about this is it's actually got enough space here for all three of them. So you've got studs in the front for you to specifically attach one character. And then you sort of have to put uh, shock a little bit on an angle there just because of the dress. They can't uh, fit perfectly there for unless you remove it. But this is still really fun that this is included and you're able to actually have them walking around here. But also, when they kidnap Sandy Claus, you can even throw him inside of the tub. So I love that this is included. I think it's very important given the context of this and why I would even say Sandy Claus is included in this set. We have to start with the Pumpkin King himself. 
Jack Skellington, who looks amazing. He does have a very similar fabric piece to the original one. We'll talk about that in a bit. The bow tie is a brand new piece. Because that piece had retired from the CMF series, they had to bring it back, and it's a little similar to the other one. But one of the best parts about Jack here is that he's got the long arms and legs, which I'm so happy about. I'm so thankful to Avatar for existing so that we can get this for Jack. It just makes him look so much better because he's so tall and lanky and it's incredible to see here. I love the leg printing there too. The arms, oh my goodness, just looks so, so great. The torso printing here too is just so, so detailed and I love the face. I think that the expression they captured here is just perfect for Jack. Also, I'm just going to borrow Sandy Claus's hat just to show you here what Jack looks like with a Santa hat on. I I'm really sad that his outfit isn't included in the set, but I get why. That will be a whole other figure. But again, I'd love more sets. I'd love that outfit. We got to do a comparison, right? So that torso printing I was just saying, it's so much better here because the lines don't overlap with each other. It's just so sort of... It's distracting here on the left side. Like it just sort of all blends together. You can't see the details with the buttons and just where his like blazer is and everything. I like the leg printing over here on this one better. And the bow tie, you could see, I feel like this one's a little bit longer and that's probably just given the whole shape of this. I will say... I like this head better. I don't know. It's something about the eyes being that size. They're a little small here for this one, but it uh, does have arm printing. I'm not sure that we've gotten arm printing on the longer arms, but uh, just showing the back torso printing there too. It does look better for the new version, but I feel like the fabric piece is very, very similar and no side leg printing for the new Jack. Again, I'm not sure if the long legs have gotten that before. Here is Sally. And she looks great. I love the leg printing. I appreciate that. It's not dual molded, so that is a bit of a shame. I definitely think it needed to be because you could see where the skin just ends. But I like the feet printing there. And it's a very detailed torso for sure. Seeing in person, I think this hair piece works quite well for her. Obviously, you know, bringing back that hair piece from the CMF series would be very complicated. But the Dumbledore hair here... I think it works well, honestly. Uh, I think that the face printing looks really good there too. And all the colors that they chose for her here look great. I love the smile on the other side and the back torso printing. Let's do a comparison though. Because I actually have a lot to say about this. The faces look very similar in terms of the prints and the expression there. Like even here, I'm just going to remove the hairs to show you. On the back, you've got the same sort of smile. So I just think that's interesting that they decided, you know, let's have that. No shocked expression or anything. But here's the thing. The new, the old hair, sorry, looks amazing. Like it was made for her. It just looks so much better. Also, that old figure had side arm printing there with the stitches and everything. That looks so much better. It was dual molded too. And that is such a shame that this new one isn't because of the legs. But if it had these shoes on those legs, I think that would be so, so great. I also really like her accessory of like the flower that she picks that gives her the vision. Wish that was referenced here in this set and included. So between these two figures, I would say that you can sort of make a better Sally, which is sort of funny, just given, you know, in universe how she's constantly, you know, putting herself back together. Here is the mayor and he looks great brick built. Now, height wise, you know, he's even taller than Jack, which doesn't really make sense, but I still think that having him brick built is really cool. I like the bullhorn megaphone included in the one hand. You could even angle the hands a little bit up and down to have that turn you've got in the other hand there i think these are meant to be like the blueprints and plans that he's showing up to jack's house with uh for next halloween and uh the torso printing looks amazing with the little uh, ribbon there as well as the spider bow tie looks great the feet are able to be angled like you saw before so you can put them together and have him sitting on two studs there side by side the hat build is honestly incredible just using the candlestick piece there at the very top and the design of that i love a lot and if you didn't know the reasoning behind him having two heads one on each side is because politicians or elected officials are two-faced so that's why on the other side he 
he has that face which looks really great there too here is zero who looks amazing it's rubbery at least the top part there uh, i think it just oh, i love it so much i love little jack lantern how it looks like a lego pumpkin on the end there and it is actually dual molded you could see all the red there so that the collar is actually shown there and i just love this a lot because for me this means so much because i'm putting this old figure here because way back in the day I did a custom Disney series too, and that included a minifigure Jack with a little Zero accessory. So the fact that all these years later, we're actually getting Lego Zero, and that series is what led me down a crazy path to creating a YouTube channel, to doing all this, to review this set, that is really, really weird. Here is Locke, who looks great. I mean, there could be some printing on the torso, some wrinkles and different things, but I think the hair works really well for him when he's not got the mask on. And you could see that the expression underneath, he's got a big smile on one side and this shocked expression on the other. And I'm going to address the masks all together at the end. Here's shock. She looks great with uh, the little skirt piece included. No torso printing for her either. I think she actually could have some, because I think she has like a belt and some pouches. But anyways, removing the hair and hat combo there, you can see she's got a smile on one side and then this even bigger smile on the other. And here is Beryl, what a lot of people have been calling Jared Leto's Joker, but uh, looks great. He does have some torso printing with the whole rib cage and everything, the spine for the skeleton outfit that he's wearing. The hair is great to have here in that uh, widow's peak hair. Big smile on one side and this shocked expression on the other. So their masks. Let's talk about that, shall we? Again, ask that question to the designers and they said that they wanted to include it and they did try having an alternate expression on the other side, but it just looked horrible and demonic and just really creepy. That's a quote from them, the demonic part. Now, not a demonic in, you know, he's got a little devil costume on. No, no, it just looked really bad that Lego and Disney both decided don't include it. And I think that the faces look good for what we got here, these shocked expressions. And they do actually surprisingly appear a lot of time in the film without their masks on, rewatching it, but yeah, Definitely wish that we could have gotten their masks because they're just iconic. And I think that the colors as well that exist in Lego's palette, they, they just work so well, I think, for these characters. But again, if we get more sets, maybe they could have a piece or something included for them. Here is Sandy Claus, who looks awesome. I did not expect him to be included in the set at all, but I'm glad he is here. I like the candy cane here as well. And uh, I'm just going to remove the hat and the hair. To show you, he's got some uh, candy corn stuck to his torso. And on the other side, he's got this lollipop. I guess that's actually under his belt. So I think he's sneaking that away for a snack later on. But I love the face just with the rosy cheeks, the big smile on one side. And he's got this shocked and scared expression on the other. And the dress printing down there looks good too. So the set has three different instructions. There are three booklets for the three different sections of the build. The first one here has the town hall and on the back, the mayor's there. And then for Jack's house, of course, who is on the back? Jack. And then on the back of the spiral hill and the cemetery, we have Zero with his little house. So I like that little attention to detail, but we have to look at the first instructions because it's the most important one here. And it features the little blurbs about the fan designer. So if you wanna go ahead and pause and read here, you can. This was the original model there and it looks really cool. I just think that uh, the shaping of the house and everything, it is very unique in that original submission. I know that's something that some people are upset about, but also look who's included, none other than Dr. Finkelstein. So a bit of a shame that he's not there, but you can read now about uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas film. And then on the next page is talking about a little blurb from the team that designed the set. And you can see here that uh, we're seeing some of the product shots for this. And then you're pretty much just into the build. And also on the bottom, we have lock for this, for the progress bar. And who do we have here? We've got Jack, of course. And for this one over here on this set, we have Sally. 
Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the new Lego Ideas Nightmare Before Christmas set. I love this a lot. I love Halloween Town again because of Kingdom Hearts. It just made me fall in love with this world and these amazing characters. And speaking of those figures, I think that's something that once it was built and I see them all lined up like this, it just was so strange and surreal to me to see that we're actually getting all these guys. Yes, there are characters like Oogie Boogie and Dr. Finkelstein that I really wish were in the set 110%. But at the same time, I might do a separate video talking about this because I keep thinking of new and just a ton of other sets we could get from Nightmare Before Christmas. Because I really think that this film is just so popular, this world, all these characters, there's so much potential for more and more of this. Make an annual thing. That's just my hope, my dream dreams for this anyways everyone i'd love to hear your thoughts on this comment down below what do you think of it are you going to be picking this up on september the 3rd or the 6th hope you guys did enjoy the video hope you will have a great day we'll see you all in the next one